Hi, my name is Jim Nelson. I'm speaking to you today as a volunteer for the American Lung Association Arizona Chapter COPD Coalition. I am, as you can probably tell from the cannula, a COPD patient. I was diagnosed about 12 years ago and have been fighting, if you will, dealing with the disease since then. I've learned a tremendous amount in that time and I wanted to share a little bit about that with you today, primarily on the subject of exercise. As I say, I was diagnosed about 12 years ago. About a year and a half ago, I wound up in the hospital with double pneumonia. I was in the hospital for several days. When I got home, it literally took me an hour to get out of bed, get to the bathroom, clean up a little bit, get dressed, and make it to the living room. Most of the hour was spent simply sitting with oxygen trying to catch my breath. This went on for several days, and I guess you could say the stubborn set in because I finally drug myself out to another room where we have a treadmill and an exercise bike. I crawled on the exercise bike, and the first day I did five minutes. It took me three tries to get the five minutes in, but I did the five minutes. Crawled back to my recliner and collapsed. The next day I did six minutes. I kept pushing myself, kept at it, uh, kept increasing my time and my intensity. At this point, a year later, I'm exercising an hour a day at fairly high intensity, of course with oxygen, either on either a treadmill or a stair stepper, small stair stepper device, or the exercise bike. Uh, this, I believe, is what has kept me alive and why I'm here today. With COPD, there's a real cycle involved. You have your diagnosis, you say, oh no, why me? You go home and sit down, <clears throat> and at that point you've got choices. You can either just sit there and wait to die, or you can do something about it. There is no cure for COPD. There's no question about that. The lungs will continue to deteriorate, but what we can do by exercising, by medication, by simply gaining knowledge on the disease is to slow it down. And that's, that's what I've done, that's what I'm doing, that's what I'm going to continue to do. The cycle I was speaking of, you try to do something, you try to exercise, you get short of breath. That's uncomfortable. It's not a desirable situation. So you sit down. And you sit there, your muscles deteriorate even further. So the next time you try to do something, you become even more short of breath. It's a real cycle. It's, it's, it's circling the drain. And that's the cycle that we've got to slow down. When you're diagnosed with COPD, one of our problems is we become more susceptible than the rest of the population to infections, lung infections, pneumonia, this type of thing. Exercise helps resist that. It helps keep us healthier. Check with your doctor before you start any sort of exercise program, as you've always heard. Make sure you're able to exercise. Get some hints from him as to the type of exercise you should do, the duration, whether or not you should exercise with oxygen. Chances are, if you've been diagnosed with COPD, he will want you on oxygen at least part of the time, possibly all the time. You've got to start slow. You've got to start with learning how to breathe properly. There's something called pursed lip breathing, which is taking a nice deep breath through your nose and then blowing it out with your lips first as though you were blowing out a candle. What this does is creates pressure within the lungs, keeps the airways more open, and allows you to get rid of more air. There's a real danger in COPD of what's called 
breath stacking, where part of the air that we inhale, we cannot get it all back out. And the worse the situation gets, the more that happens. So pursed lip breathing and diaphragmatic breathing, breathing so that your stomach goes in and out uh, is a good way to do this. It, the, as the lungs increase in size, it tends to flatten the diaphragm. And the flatter the diaphragm, the harder it is to breathe. So using the diaphragmatic breathing and the first lip breathing will keep you going a little bit better. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pulmonary rehabilitation. If you can get into a program, most hospitals have a pulmonary rehab program. That is an excellent way to get into exercise. The nurses, the personnel there have the expertise. They will show you how to use the equipment. They'll monitor your use of the equipment. They'll teach you classes on medication, on nutrition, on just generally making your way through life with COPD. So that's a really, really excellent program. When you're exercising, use oxygen. If you are required to, do it. Have no uh, qualms about using it. Uh, there's a set thing called a pulse ox machine, which this is an example of that. It fits on the tip of your finger and it shows you at any point in time your oxygen saturation. Mine happens to be 97 right now, which is quite good. Of course, I'm on two liters of oxygen. And my pulse rate is 91 because I'm excited to be here talking to you. But it's a good idea to get one of these. You can find these from about $50 on up. Uh, the highest I've seen are probably in the $300 category. This particular model will run you about $100. But it's an extremely valuable tool for monitoring yourself throughout the day while you're exercising. For exercising your legs, which is probably the primary exercise you'll be involved in, Walking is excellent, walking inside or outside. A treadmill is one of the uh, most popular items to use because you've got the movement, you can adjust the speed and the uh, tilt on most of them, and you've got the arms to hang on to for balance. <clears throat> it will give you a readout of your speed, your distance, your calories, this type of thing. I've got a recumbent exercise bike that I use. I love it. It's adjustable again, it has the readouts, and I would really have to work to fall off the thing. It's, it's very, very comfortable to use. I mentioned a stair stepper. It's a little device I think I paid $60 for on the internet. It's show, it, it is excellent for balance, <clears throat> and again, you have uh, uh, excellent exercise for your legs. Upper body strength is extra important also because of the breathing apparatus it is part of your upper body. Uh, you can do this with arm exercises, with free weights, with rubber bands, <clears throat> with uh, water bottles filled with sand, anything that will give you some resistance training. Other activities can substitute for your regular exercise, just to add a little variety. Uh, vacuuming. Your wife will love it. Your caregivers will love it. Uh, exercising, I mean, I'm sorry, using a vacuum cleaner with a 50-foot oxygen hose brings a whole new meaning to the word entanglement, believe me. <laughs> Build a habit of exercising. Exercise is difficult, but it makes the rest of your life so much easier. I, f I really feel I'm addicted to exercise at this point, as you can probably tell, but it makes me feel better. Thanks for listening. <laughs>